Hello. Beep, 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 beep. Welcome to the Court of the EI Jester. How are we, everybody? Another day, another dollar. I hope you've remembered that tomorrow is Thursday and we'll all be wearing red. Red. You don't know why? Go have a look. You should know. We should all be wearing red. So I, I shall hopefully be wearing red at some point tomorrow. Now, uh, Amanda has given me a prod <laughs> out of nowhere. Thanks, Amanda. To remind me to look after my Substack subscribers because I don't respond enough. Amanda, I will do better. Um, at least I will attempt to. At the moment, I'm completely in involved in writing year three of the Warrior Teacher Programme. I am literally snowed under, but I will attempt to do better <laughs> and pay more attention. Thank you for giving me a gentle prod. I appreciate it. Um, other than that, thank you to everyone who supports me, all the usual stuff, and do become a Warrior Teacher. Subscribe to my Substack. Do whatever you can. So I've got this this article today from a magazine called Extra, X-T-R-A, Extra, which is all about if you want to end transphobia, you've got to talk to the people who, you know, you don't want to talk to, essentially. It's absolutely astonishing. So let's have a look. You can see it over here, right? It's 2024, 10 years past the so-called trans tipping point. What you mean when we, we started to believe the lies? That's what they mean there. And while we've made gains, it is a widely acknowledged reality amongst most trans communities, trans communities, that in the situation around our civil rights has seriously devolved in the past decade. I don't think it's devolved. What's devolved about it? You can still dress as you want. What's devolved is that people won't entertain your nonsense. What's devolved is that we won't listen to you talking about trans history and trans kids because we know that you lie about everything. Right, so what you actually mean there, the, the, our, civil, our ability to lie has seriously devolved in the past decade. Today, trans rights are the subject of an international moral panic. No, 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 no. And anti-trans legislation has been introduced in several countries around the world, including both the USA, US and Canada. Now, that's the reason that that's happened is because you went after the kids. That's the first one. Secondly, that you're lying about lots of stuff. Um, and thirdly, that we are re, you know, believers in reality, science, rather than cult-like beliefs about things such as gender identity, which of course confuse kids to get medicalized and butchered at various places around the world. That's what it is. The so-called gender critical movement. So here we go, right? So what this person is saying, what this person is saying, and this person is saying is, we need to talk to these people. If, we, if transphobia is gonna end, we need to talk to these people. And the first thing they say is the so-called gender critical movement. Is it me or are they totally clueless? The so-called gender critical movement has arguably become an industry unto itself, spearheaded by notorious figures such as billionaire Elon Musk and Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling. It also launched or boosted the careers of self-starred cultural figures such as Jordan Peterson, Matt Walsh and Percy Parker. Right, so these are the people you want to talk to and you start by insulting them. So no recognition whatsoever of your lies, your deceit, your attack on women, women's rights, reality, science, yep, homosexuality, your attack on all that, no. Your grab for children in the name of your cult, no mention of any of that, no mention of it's probably a good idea if we think about what it is we've actually done before we engage with these people. In the first chapter of a chapter, in the first paragraph of, a, of an article in a magazine meant to talk about how to, how to engage with people who they think are transphobes, and the first thing they do is insult them. Well done. You've undone your entire, re entire reason for writing this article in the first paragraph. You utter loons of the first order. It's just extraordinary. At the heart of all this, and perhaps most worrying of all, and I've lost it, <laughs> most worrying of all, is the apparent normalisation of transphobia among the general population. It has in some circles become common and even trendy to endorse, endorse fear, hatred and disgust at the very idea of our public existence, to the extent that the subject of our human rights has been weaponized as a wedge issue by countless politicians over the past four years. Yet this social panic, like most social panics, is based on fear and misinformation. It can be resisted and transformed through solid, sol solidarity work and coalition building. So you're going to build a collective, are you? Yeah, that always makes me nervous. Um, this is utter cobblers of the first order. Right. It is not transphobic to believe in reality. It is not transphobic to point out that you are not something you say you are. It is not transphobic to expect you to stay away from our schools, teaching our, our nurses, our doctors, that you stay away from establishments that require science and, and keep yourself floating around the ephemera of the of the arts and humanities. Although, quite frankly, I don't want you there either. 
Weird, isn't it? Absolutely weird. Right? It's not about hatred and disgust. It's about public decency. We don't want fetishistic men wander around, wandering around in dresses, getting themselves a nice little uh, euphoria boner because they happen to be being treated as if they were women, which we shouldn't do ever. As you will know, if you've seen my helpful pronoun guide. Pronoun guide. All right. So, it therefore seems clear, they continue, that the look up at the Q2S, right, there you go. You've lost most people already with your look up at the Q2S. Plus community, and particularly those of us in roles of leadership, cultural influence and social privilege. Who are they then? Is in dire need of a strategy to transform our relationship with those who misunderstand and fear us. We don't misunderstand and fear us. We know exactly what you are. Cross-dressing men with fetishes or people who are unwell, deeply unwell, or confused kids, and in particular girls, running from their from the fact that they're female, or running from the fact that they are lesbians, or boys running from the fact that they are gay, which you have taken advantage of. That is predatory, by the way, just in case you don't say the word again. Predatory, just so that you get it. Okay? In order to push back, we need to develop stronger collective skills and capacity to engage in education, coalition building and solidarity work with communities that have been specifically targeted by transphobic and homophobic propaganda. Right. So there you go. Now you're forced teaming homophobia with transphobia. So you're saying that you're going through the same thing as gays and lesbians did. You certainly are not. You certainly are. Why don't you just move to Iran? They'll pay for your surgery. Migrants, working class, white people, the heterosexual parents of suburban nuclear families, to name a few. That's the people that you've got to form a coalition with, is it? The working class white people. Good luck. Good luck. Because the working classes see this far more clearly than our elites do. Or those, you know, snuffling on the public breast in terms of money. They see it far clearer. Right? They know, what, they, they know a gusset fumbler when they see one. In short, she said, we must learn how to talk to transphobes and we must learn to do it well. Well, I, I would say that in the first two paragraphs of this frankly ridiculous article, you've managed to fail on all fronts on that particular goal. So I don't know why you're bothering. To some readers of Extra, this may seem like a common sense. To others, it is likely to feel very much at odds with the popular social justice culture of the last decade. Social justice is, no, is not popular. It's just noisy. OK, and we're going to see to that, too, just so you know. It's not just about transphobia. We're going to see to that, too, because we can see you hiding under all that guff and nonsense from the critical social justice lunatics. So, you know, it's, we, we know that you're part of a bigger movement. A decade ago, my younger radical queer activist self. So you're a radical queer activist. Oh, yeah, we know what that means. What was it Judith Butler said? To break down the barriers between adult and child. We know what a queer activist is. You say that as your younger radical queer activist self would have found it unthinkable that I would ever embrace such an idea. What is actually what reality? I probably would have denounced it as a mealy mouth liberalism. Re reality is not mealy mouth liberalism. Reality is normality and not mental illness. OK. Yet today, as a slightly older radical queer, well, I would say 10, 10 years older. <laughs> as a slightly older radical queer, a slightly older radical queer. <laughs> Why can't I see an, an infogram? An infogram. Radical queer. Slightly older radical queer. <laughs> it's just so strange. Yet today, as a slightly older radical queer, I am convinced that finding a way to persuade those who fear us that we are not, in fact, so different after all you really are, is the only way for us to win the future that we long for, a future that is safer and more just for everyone. It won't be more just for everyone, will it, if we introduce gender identity ideology and decimate the lives of women and gay folk, will it? Will it? You thought about that one? Right. Popular social justice discourse through the 2010s. They are starting to talk like Judith Butler now. That Here comes all the, the critical social justice academic crap. Popular social justice discourse throughout the 2010s was dominated by a particular style of identity focused intersectional feminism, a style that many young millennial culture workers, writers and media makers, including myself in some small ways, were a part of articulating. You still are articulating that. 
For many of the queer and trans people within this milieu, the notion of educating others out of prejudice came to be seen not only as an ineffective strategy for social change, but antithetical to the project of liberation entirely because of the burden it places on us to act as ad hoc ambassadors for our entire communities. No, 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 no. That word salad there, right, essentially says um, educate yourselves. Right. You need to know, know about us queer folk because we're different from you, because we're not actually human. We've got inner souls that are slipped in by a God that gets it wrong. Or we need to have access to your children because we're queer. We need to stop thinking that families are a good idea because we're queer. No, we're not taking your bullshit anymore. And you should already know that, by the way. We're not taking it. The sentiment of it's not my job to educate you became a common refrain among us, as did a certain resistance to the idea of doing the emotional labour of discussing the rights of marginalised groups with outside audiences. You're not a marginalised group. You're not even a coherent group. You are you're just a group of people who are either batshit, fetishists or terribly ill, right, who got together and decided, well, let's call ourselves this because you have the new <coughs> the new <coughs> expiration of a unlimited uh, sort of geographical area within the internet so the cyberspace the geography of cyberspace in which to all get together and and coalesce around your fetish or your illness and then pretend that you were somebody that should have the same rights as those that are born gay or that are female that's all you are and this kind of article doesn't help you at all but i'll leave my beautiful watchers and listeners to tell you that because i'm sure they will once they manage to get their teeth into having a look at that which is what you should do because you know it goes on and 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 on, but it's fun to watch. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Another load of cobblers from the trans nonsense merchants. I'll see you later. Bye bye.